Hey, what's up guys, Arava here, and welcome back to a brand new video here today, where we are going to discover just how fast a maxed out My Team Career Mode car is. That generic FOM car that we all have to use in My Team Career Mode. Well, just how quick can it be when it's fully maxed out? I'm talking complete upgrades on the aero, engine, chassis, durability, and, and hopefully as many of the upgrades as we can get also from the manufacturer of the PU as well, because of course that comes automatically. And compared to recent uh, games and years, our job is actually made easier a little bit in this experiment by getting to a maxed out car. Because before I've had to go with like, you know, a million R&D, uh, you know, a billion dollars which we still will do but we've got a head start now because of that new system where you can start your my team career mode as a championship challenger so the game is going to give us already pre you know pre-installed upgrades to the hq to our r d as well so there's a little bit less work to do so basically internally this is going to make this video a bit shorter for me to actually produce for you guys because it will take less races it won't take over a season we can easily do this now within like half a season of season one by also obviously then also at the same time as we have done in the past giving ourselves you know one million R&D, one billion dollars, a ridiculous amount of money and resource points, but it's going to mean that we can literally purchase everything straight away. It's going to look a bit, bit ridiculous, but that's going to be the story of how we build up to a maxed out car so quickly. And then at the end of the second half of this video... And then for the second half of this video, we're actually going to be driving this car and seeing how it is. And seeing also how our AI teammate is going to see it. Because the, you know, the usual question is, how quick is it around Austria? There seems to be this obsession with Austria in under 60 seconds as the cars get quicker and quicker. Uh, you know, as we've done this kind of experiment on previous F1 games. So we will be answering that question. Can we get to under 60 seconds? But first of all... Like I said, I'll take you through the story and the journey of obviously getting this car to maxed out. Buying every single upgrade on the HQ facilities that we can. We already started off, uh, thankfully, like I said, at level 2 for quite a few things. Because of that, you know, title challenger setting, I was able to uh, start the career mode save with. But, you know, Giga Chad Grand Prix investing hard. And we are going to be the biggest Giga Chad of them all once this car gets up to scratch. So, going ahead and buying every single upgrade so you know this gives us a little glimpse into the future hopefully if you know our actual normal you know my actual proper my team career mode you know some of these upgrades i'll be looking to hopefully make in the next couple episodes in the next season or whatever and it's gonna be interesting to see how this maxed out car drives because i think you guys will agree especially in the last two f1 games i would say uh, ever since my team came basically in because i think before it wasn't much of uh, as much of an issue but ever since my team came in we had this generic car that was designed by Codemasters and the F1 engineers in tandem and is meant to be like a, you know, blueprint generic car. Um, we've noticed a slight kind of weird thing with this car that sometimes as you upgrade it more, it kind of feels worse. Like it's actually physically faster and the lap time is there, but the feeling of the car actually sometimes feels worse. And mainly, you know, last year, I remember the biggest issue was brakes. Like every time you did the, the last kind of few uh, brake upgrades to max out the chassis the car just stopped you know, feeling very good under braking because it was almost like the brakes were too powerful for their own good and you had to do some insane extreme setup work to make it fine. Or in my case, I actually on purpose never purchased brake upgrades on last year's game to try and, you know, uh, offset that basically. We've also had a few uh, times where just the, you know, the aero feels a bit funny. It kind of, you know, the car doesn't feel like it, it was, you know, it doesn't feel like an F1 car anymore and the way it produced the downforce and the chassis and the weight balance can also feel weird. So this is going to be a video, uh, an experiment to see many things. One, first of all, just seeing what a maxed out car looks like, you know, in the menus with all the R&D uh, and then also the lap time. But also then genuinely asking the question of like, you know, is it actually a worse car? Does it feel like a worse car? Which I already kind of feel like it may it may do because, um, yeah, I mean, uh, even our car right now in season two seems a bit funny feeling to what we had in season one, even though it's a quicker car. But anyway, as I've been discussing, 
discussing all of this and kind of going into the more scientific research purposes of this video, we in the background on the actual screen visually, you'll see we're actually doing the thing. We're doing the journey. We're buying all these upgrades, a ridiculous activity timeline on the left hand side. I mean, look how many, there's like 10 upgrades coming in one day apparently, which is just ridiculous. Quite a few of them are failing as well at the same time, so having to repurchase them as well, but it's no bother. We've got, you know, wet, as you can see, we've not even made a dent into the 1 million R&D that we had on the top right, and uh, we were already, already done with our actual, you know, tangible dollar money spending on the HQ facility. So it's really now just about the final few upgrades, and I want to point out, you know, we're only at the Spanish Grand Prix now, and our car is insanely quick. Uh, you know, our teammate right now is the starting teammate, Marcus Armstrong, but he's five seconds ahead of myself, Mr. Moneybags himself, simulated by the way, of course, so simulated, we're being simulated 37 seconds nearly ahead of Lewis Hamilton in the Mercedes, which is quite significant because I, or, I always feel like when you simulate the race, they try and make your character do worse to try and encourage you to actually play the game through, so the fact that we're 37 seconds ahead of the next AI car in the simulations pretty much, you know, shows you how quick the car is, and now we've got to the stage, you can see 24 out of 24, chassis 23 out of 23, the only other uh, departments that aren't fully done are engine and uh, durability, and that is because the only upgrades I've got left to do are the ones that come from our engine supplier, so those are kind of, they're the kind of RNG, you never know when they're going to come in, you have to do all the whole season for them to come in, they may get reset, so we're not kind of including those upgrades in the maxed out car, because you could easily lose them or gain them at any point in your career mode, basically, so to all intents and purposes, we've got a maxed out car. You can see how mad it is. We're basically, if you calculate for it, if you look at the gap from Red Bull to Williams, that's the whole grid spread. We're kind of one grid spread and a third above the second best team on the grid, which is Red Bull. You could fit that entire grid spread once over and then maybe just a third or maybe a fifth until you get to where we plateaued from Miami to Spain. But just showing, you know, compare, if you look back at re uh, previous games, this has taken a lot shorter because of that whole you know starting off as a championship contender and then we shot up so uh, you know if this if we didn't have those starting options for the career mode maybe this would have taken you know maybe the whole season or maybe two thirds of the way through the season but it's still pretty rapid and of course being the best team on the grid having unlimited money good acclaim we can go ahead and sign the best driver in the game as it stands in this save right now which was 94 rated Lewis Hamilton and here he is now around Austria and he is a hundred rated in our team because of the personnel upgrades. So this is an a hundred rated AI whose base stat is 94 anyway, so you know, even if you don't believe in the 100 stat, you know that naturally he's a very high-rated AI driver, and we're watching him right now in qualifying. I've zoomed in the camera to watch his onboard around Austria. The car itself doesn't spring out to look insane. I feel like in better F1 2021 and 2020, um, it feels a little bit less dramatic of how the car looks like it doesn't look like it's insanely on rails but maybe that's just because the handling model the way it is or you know the car the way the car reacts with the curbs so the ai themselves also aren't taking too much curb or whatnot but also you've got to remember this era of car is slower than the previous era of cars so hamilton comes across the line and he sets a one minute o2 Two. I go again, I run it back, and I just want to see what he can do again. This time he does a 101.966, but that is pretty much like the lowest I could get, you know, in the region of 1.01. Of course, like I said, that's to be expected. This era, this new era in 2022 and onwards, the way the aero is, you know, the you know, very simplified above body aero, and a lot of it done with the ground effect, the cars are a bit slower around every single circuit. The way they produce downforce is different so maybe the downforce upgrades are less effective uh, maybe I don't know we could get a sub uh, 60 second lap time if you were to 
go on further into the career mode because I know not only can the cars get quicker, we've seen before in my team career mode on the last game that the AI, they just themselves get quicker and quicker. You know, at the moment we've got this issue in the game where focus is a bit broken, so maybe that plays into it. Maybe if they were like, you know, over 80 focus, they could drive even quicker and get to under 60 seconds. So I may come back to this and revisit this challenge and experiment of getting Austria under 60 seconds Maybe, you know, if we can play around with the career mode save, that's, you know, multiple seasons down the line. Maybe when they've addressed the, the focus being broken in career mode saves, uh, maybe it's a, ch a kind of experiment we come back to. But that is our AI teammate. 101. Still pretty damn rapid, you know. That's 62 seconds to go around the Red Bull ring. And now we're going to see how, for ourselves, how this maxed out car drives in the sprint race around Austria, which is going to be six laps in this career mode save because we've got 25% race. So six laps. Can I go from last to second place? Because I know Hamilton is going to walk off in the distance. But can we go from last to second? Let's find out, I guess, and see how this car drives. Is there going to be a slight funny feeling about this car or will it just be on absolute rails? Let's go. Fire it lights. And we are underway. And the start is, is nothing special. Still the same sort of wheel spin that I've, I, I've grown accustomed to from season two or season one. It didn't feel like the car was any better at the start. You know, obviously we have more power, so that probably negates kind of any grip you're going to get from having better downforce and a lighter car because you've got that extra power going through the rear wheels. We were able to make quite a large dive bomb down the inside, but already I was feeling from a practice lap earlier and then just then you saw the kind of lock up, even though I was able to make, you know, two, three overtakes there. Um, again, I I, I want to say early days um, from just this race alone. I think the same issue you had on last year's game with the brakes being way too sensitive and actually kind of feeling worse in a way when you've maxed out the car or you do those final brake upgrades and the chassis side of things. I think that's carried over. The brakes still feel very spongy and you know you can't really lean on them as much as you could pre the brake upgrade. So. I think, again, on this year's game, I probably will be avoiding the brake upgrades on purpose, even though technically they would actually help you, and maybe you would definitely help your AI teammate. I just think in terms of feeling with the pedal and locking up, it's just so easy to lock them. Maybe, you know, if you were to put brake bias really all the way to the rear, bring down the brake pressure, you could kind of bring that under control, but that kind of negates then the whole point of having better brakes. So, uh, yeah, it was a, it was a bit uh, frustrating to, again, see that issue, but all in all, then the car is going well we're up into p13 so we're about halfway up the grid now on lap two i was expecting a bit more though i know austria is very difficult to overtake at in the first turn on the opening lap but even moments like this where i was going around the outside of magnuson like i would have thought i could have gone waltzing around him dance around him but i just didn't feel that confidence now as i went on through this race you'll see you know at, at, by the time we get to the, the the fifth lap and the sixth lap i do maybe get more confident where the limit of the car is, so I, I kind of know better, oh, I can put the power down now rather than, you know, uh, you know a lot later down in the corner. I can break this much later. So there is that kind of you know, element of I need to get more confident with driving a maxed out car to really know where its limits are. But in previous games on F1 2021, 2020, and even, you know, before my team, when you maxed out AI cars, official uh, F1 teams, um, you felt that instant, instant, kind of confidence versus non-maxed out AI, you felt the difference between the cars. I honestly, apart from this straight line, like every time I put ERS on, it was like a rocket ship. It was like, okay, this is where the performance is. But it's like most of the performance was coming from the engine, coming from the acceleration, the ERS, and also maybe how lightweight the car is, which plays into my theory that I think they make the My Team car overly heavy on purpose to give you more upgrading to do because um, I've always said do weight reduction at the start of career modes um, and you can just see it like every move I'm making here where I'm catching is on entry a little bit under braking yeah sure but it's then on the exit it's catching them in a straight line you know in in mid in the midsection around Austria there's not a large mix at midsection but the midsection I'm losing or just about equalizing the AI in terms of mid corner so there's not actually too much time I feel gaining downforce wise and grip wise in a max start car versus the AI and so that's going to be an interesting one I think in terms of you know in your normal career modes when you're looking to make upgrades I think honestly you don't actually need to make many air upgrades you should definitely concentrate on the chassis concentrate on the engine 
more so than the aero side, because that's where you're going to gain more time on the AI. I don't know if this is also still a legacy bit of that straight line OP nature from the AI, like maybe that's still there. And so now with a now with a maxed out car, I'm able to fully close up to them. I don't know. It's it's it, that's why we do these experiments because it's interesting to see how the game reacts, how the physics react, how we are versus the AI. But yeah, I don't know. I hear I made a nice move on Russell around the outside. I felt quite confident there. So that was my first glimpse of okay, maybe if I just do a few more laps. I would really start to wring the neck out of this car and feel great. But I didn't even catch Verstappen here in six laps. Hamilton's 14.3 seconds down the road. And more so than any other year, I did not feel like an overpowered, insane driver in this max out car. I usually do. You go back and watch other videos on F1 2019, 2020, 2021, it feels like I'm on rails. It, feel, it feels like the car is an absolute dry, you know, machine made from God. Like, you know, 2013 Red Bull Vettel era of dominance and speed and grip. This did not feel like it. This was probably the worst a maxed out car felt versus non-maxed out cars and just in general the feeling in the car itself I didn't feel like I was driving an absolute beast which is odd I don't know that's because of the new era the regulations maybe how the downforce comes and therefore you can't feel that way but it's a yeah it's an odd one so the max that car don't get me wrong it's still bloody rapid in the hands of the AI teammate insane even the hands of me in six laps I was able to go from last to second place just about I mean I would have got Verstappen on the line um so it's still mega, but the feeling, that aura of how good it is, is a little bit less with this new era of cars in this uh, handling model. So, yeah, food for thought, food for thought. And like I said, I may come back to that experiment of trying to do under 60 seconds when we can somehow try and get maybe a later season AI to try it. But that's been this video then, guys. That has been the maxed out car and career mode that you're all aiming for in my team career mode. If you have enjoyed the video, hit the like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're new around here, then do get subscribed for weekly Formula 1 content. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.